What's up guys, my name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thanks for checking out this video. Today we are talking about dialing in the HX Stomp for great acoustic tones. You just heard my Martin HD28 run direct into the HX Stomp. And today we're gonna to talk about how I created that preset and some tips and tricks for dialing in your acoustic. I also wanna let you guys know that I'm gonna make that preset available on my website for three bucks. Not only does that give you a good starting point for dialing in your own tone, but it helps support the channel and helps me make videos. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely check the link in the description below. Also, before we get into it, I wanna tell you guys a little more about this guitar. This is a Martin HD28. It has a K, K Pure Mini pickup in it. That is a completely passive, I think it's a transducer style pickup. There's no battery, there's no volume control. I just plug it in and go. It sounds pretty good, pretty natural, but it's relatively inexpensive. Um, all that being said, I've been pretty happy with it, um, but it does need some help. It needs a little EQ. It can tend to be boomy. Um, it's also pretty sensitive to the impedance of what it's plugged into. Um, just letting you guys know kind of the starting point with this guitar. It's not a really fancy, expensive acoustic guitar pickup. It's your run-of-the-mill basic uh, pickup. And I think with the HX Stomp, we can get it sounding really great. So let's get into it. So here you can see I've got HX Edit pulled up. We're gonna start on the left side and work our way towards the right. As with electric tones, the input impedance is going to affect things for sure, especially on my guitar because it's a passive pickup. I noticed that the input impedance really affected the low end. So typically I would start over here at one meg with my electrics. Um, and I found that my tone was super boomy when I was here on the acoustic. So I ended up moving it over and kind of landed on 136K. Again, that's gonna depend on your specific acoustic. It might not be as sensitive to the input impedance, but it's definitely something you should try first before you really get into EQing and compressing things. In the next block, I have the Studio Tube Pre. Um, I found that, you know, as I kind of tried this out it just added a richness to things i'm not always of the mindset that a tube pre is going to make is always going to make things sound better or that tubes always sound better but i did i really like the sound of this preamp on my acoustic so i i threw it in there i also use the low cut on this it's set at 70 hertz right now you can see here depending on if i was playing with a band or playing solo i might adjust this if i was playing solo i might take it down to 60 or 50 and if I was playing with a band, I might take it up even higher, maybe 80, 90, even 100 hertz. Um, all of that low end frequency content is right where a bass player is going to be. So if you're playing with a bass player, you're playing with keys that have a lot of rich low end in there, you're probably not gonna need those frequencies as an acoustic player. So I would definitely encourage you to consider cutting some of those out. Our next block is a low and high shelf. This is an EQ that I'm using to just kind of gently shape the overall tone. So shelves are going to be from, so take our low shelf for instance, we're at 210 Hertz and then we're taking that down 0.7 dB. So that's going to gently take away frequencies from 210 Hertz downward. And then with our high frequency, we're at 4.8 kilohertz and we're raising those 1.5. So from 4.8, upward we're bringing up the volume of those frequencies i'm using this block to just kind of gently shape things i'm getting rid of a little bit of low end and then just overall brightening things up it's a more gentle style eq and then we will use an additional eq to kind of pinpoint more specific frequencies to dial in our tone even more so in my next block i'm using a parametric eq i'm using this to get rid of some low mids that kind of muddy things up as well as just shape the mid-range a bit more. I find with acoustic guitar, we end up cutting out a lot of mid-range. Um, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking to kind of smooth things out, especially um, the sound of my pick hitting the strings when I strum. I'm kind of taking that out so I can get those silky smooth strummed guitar tones. I could find myself wanting some of those back depending on what style I'm playing or if I'm playing a finger pick part as opposed to a strum part. One idea for this is you could assign different EQ parameters to a foot switch and um, have different settings for different types of parts. Um, if you want more info on using your foot switches and assigning them to things, be sure to check out my video all about the foot switches on the HX Stomp and different ideas for using those. 
And the next block, I'm using the Deluxe Compressor. Um, I tried a few different compressors inside the HX Stomp, and this is where I landed. I typically really like the LA Studio Comp, but it was adding something for the acoustic that I, I didn't like. Even with it out at compressing, it was just adding some mid-range frequencies that I wasn't really a fan of. So I ended up on the Deluxe Comp. One thing that I'm doing here is that I'm just kind of lightly compressing. I'm just at a three to one ratio. Um, I've got kind of a faster attack. And then I've got my mix dialed way down. We're at 35% on this. Um, the reason for this is just so I'm, I'm not kind of just getting a ton of compression. It's just kind of filling things out, lightly evening things out. And I find for me, um, it just kind of adds a finished sound to it. I'm not overly compressing, especially when I am playing in a live setting and there's a great engineer. I find that I don't want to compress as much. I don't want to EQ as aggressively. I want to let them do that so that they can find the best place in the mix for my acoustic. Um, I'm just kind of gently overall shaping the tone to get it ready for them. Now, if you're playing solo acoustic or you're playing in a setting where maybe there's not a sound man and you're kind of having to do all that on your own, you could definitely be more aggressive with some of these settings, more aggressive with the EQ, maybe EQ more, maybe compress more, turn that mix up on the compressor. Um, you know, these are just different factors. It just all depends on the setting that you're in. If I'm in a setting where I have a great monitor engineer, I have a great front of house engineer, I'm definitely not going to compress and EQ as much because as I do that, I'm kind of limiting what they can do to the sound. I'm getting rid of frequencies that maybe they want back or maybe I'm overly compressing the guitar and they want it to be more open. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different factors there, but I would definitely say... If you're playing in a setting with a sound man, definitely be more conservative on how much you EQ and you compress. That goes also for our next block that I'm gonna talk about, which is reverb. Here I'm using a stereo reverb. This is just giving me a broader, wider sound. Um, I've got the mix at 18%. I really haven't tweaked it much. Um, I pulled this up and, and it sounded pretty good. I might have adjusted the pre-delay, um, which is really important for kind of making things a little more open and, and not covering up those initial transients of your playing. I really like adding just a little bit of verb to my acoustic. It makes it sound a little more lifelike. It sounds a little more inspiring. But other than that, I don't really do much. Um, I'm not adding a chorus or delays. I know a lot of people get into playing highly affected acoustic guitar sounds. And typically for the type of things I'm doing, I don't need things like that. So for this, I've gone for a pretty basic acoustic sound. One other thing that I want to talk about that was present in this preset but wasn't turned on is another compressor and is a three band compressor. So this is a frequency specific compressor. Um, I experimented with this a little bit. I love the idea of essentially using a multi band compressor on acoustic just to kind of make it bright but not harsh and, and kind of control different frequencies and whatnot um, and have that be specific to you know the dynamic of how I'm playing. But it was really hard to dial in and I couldn't, couldn't really get it setting how I wanted to. Um, I'm mentioning this because it's definitely something to experiment with. I think if you spent a lot of time with it and you got really familiar with this compressor that it could be really helpful for acoustics. So just an idea, just something for you to mess around with. Um, I couldn't really get it dialed in to where I liked it and I was happy um, without it. So um, I'm not using it currently, but you know, just something to experiment with. When it comes to dialing in the HX stomp for acoustic, I think there are three big takeaways. The first is adjusting the input impedance. This can easily get overlooked, but has a huge impact on your sound, especially if you're using a passive style pickup. For me, at one end of the spectrum, things were really bassy and boomy, and at the other end, it was really small and thin sounding. So finding the sweet spot really ensures that you're gonna have the best tones starting out before you EQ and compress. The second big takeaway is focusing on the mid-range when you're EQing your acoustic. For me, I look at about 500 on up to about 2K. This is the really percussive attacky part of an acoustic guitar. This is our pick attack. And for strummed acoustic guitars, I end up cutting a lot of this range out. Um, it gives us those silky smooth strummed acoustic tones. If we dial too much out here, then we're not going to have enough attack. So again, finding the sweet spot is key. The third point is kind of overarching, but it's context is everything. 
whether it's EQing, compressing, or adding effects, think about what context you're playing in. Are you playing solo acoustic? Are you playing in a band setting? Is the acoustic the focal point or is it just a support instrument? All of these should inform how much or how little you EQ and compress things and how much or little you add effects. Especially if you're working with a great sound guy, definitely err on the conservative side. If you're the sound guy and you're playing, then you know, feel free to EQ and compress as much as you feel is necessary. But definitely think about the context and everything surrounding the situation that you're playing in. That's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully some of these tips were helpful for you in dialing in great acoustic tone on the HX Stomp. Remember, when it comes to tone, there's no right answer. So with your guitar and your setup, try some of these concepts and hopefully it helps you get the sound you're after. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.